Hi, everyone. Dr. Vardy here in week two of our English 5830 narrative medicine class. This week, I'm so excited because our focus is on creative writing as a tool for narrative medicine. Um, in a minute here, I'm going to go through our mini lesson and just kind of hit some of the high points of the readings. You have three readings this week, uh, the Baruch article, some excerpts from Stephen King's On Writing, which we'll talk about in a second. And I threw in there an excerpt from one of Neil Gaiman's um, classes. He does a master's class, which you do have to sign up for and pay for the full class. But I thought that the excerpt that is linked in our canvas about writing honest stories had some really useful tidbits. So we'll get into that. Um, in a minute. But first, I just wanted to say out loud, and I'm going to post this in the announcement as well, that um, a couple of you have asked about the discussions. Just posting to the reading discussion should automatically make your post be seen by your small group that I've assigned you. I don't think there's any need to post in a special place, but if it's unclear, you are trying to just post to your small group. So if you, I, I don't think that there is an option to post to the whole class, but just know that the intention is for just a few of you to be able to have maybe a more in-depth conversation or discussion on the chat. So that's the intention of that assignment so that you can really dig into the meat of the readings and get some back and forth going. Okay, so... Let me switch over to my share screen and we will get into our mini lecture for this week. What's that? Let's make it nice and big so we can see it. Okay, so this week, like I said, we're talking about creative writing as a tool for narrative medicine. And I'm gonna start by talking about the Stephen King excerpts that I gave you. I'm pulling from his book on writing, uh, Memoir of the Craft. And whether or not you're a Stephen King fan, and I actually don't love his horror fiction myself because I can't personally handle very scary things to read, even if they're campy. Um, I love a lot of his writing and especially love this book about the craft of writing, which is where we're going to hopefully land this week. Um, Cause one of the purposes for assigning you this particular book is how pragmatic and useful I find King's discussions about writing as a craft, as, as a, a making not just as some kind of weird ethereal, uh, I get transmission from some source and spit it out and nobody can figure out how I did it. No, Stephen King's going to talk pr very pragmatically and step by step about his writing process and the things that he uses to make things. Um, but I included this very first excerpt in here where uh, Stephen King, I just love this the essay, I guess you would call it, about what writing is. And I'm not even going to spoil it for you because it's lovely. I love from the very first sentence to the end sentence. I just love this essay so much. It reminds me actually a lot of Anne Lamott, which we read last week and which we're going to talk about later when we talk about your creative response this week. But King is very uh direct and unswerving about first of all drawing the connection between the process of reading and the process of writing yet showing them to be completely distinct from each other and i think what he means by that is reading for pleasure reading like a reader because i think that when we read like a writer we can read with an eye toward craft which is, I think, something that King ends up demonstrating in the second section that I have assigned to you guys, which is his toolbox section. And King's going to use the metaphor of the toolbox to visually walk you through different 
things to be attending to when you're doing creative writing. Now, some of you in this class may have taken lots of creative writing classes. Some of you in this class may have taken zero creative writing classes. So I am intending this to be sort of like a, a scattershot or a survey of some creative writing techniques that may be a lot of review for some of you, or, or maybe they're new and you want to try them out in this class. Either way, I, I just love the way that King presents this metaphor of the toolbox. He has multiple layers for the different trays. You know, he's got what I call lower order concerns. He's got in the top tray. These are things like vocabulary and grammar and syntax and, you know, knowing how and when and why to use punctuation for an intended effect. Um, in his second tray, he's got things like organization and structure and paragraphing. And then in his in the bottom of his toolbox, he's got a little bit more of the um, emotional resonance, the stuff of the story that kind of co-creates with you or creates itself, so to speak. Uh, and I think here, honestly, as a writer myself, towards the end, he's kind of getting at what I would call like a flow state or uh, I'm ready to go and I'm just rolling with this story. I think he says something like you can get about the task of writing fiction now <laughs> once you've gotten through the trays. But I want to say out loud to you guys, um, even though I love... King's tone here. And I do agree in, in large part with a lot of what he says, especially about the connection between reading and writing. I think that we should not read King like a style handbook or a rule book. So a couple of times King references Strunk in White, which is a seminal style and grammar handbook. Um, and King's going to talk very emphatically about things like you should know what a gerund is. I mean, I guess <laughs> I think we can know what a gerund is without knowing what it's called. And I also think that more than rules, what I want you guys to get from this excerpt is the perspective on writing as a craft as a process that can be learned and as something that anyone can figure out to some degree. So whether you're taking this class as a seasoned English major who's taken creative writing courses and literature courses, or if you're taking this class as someone on the medical track and you're like, I'm not a writer, all of us can benefit from thinking about writing like it's a Lego set, like it's something that we can figure out and we can make choices about how to build it. And I just want to, to that end, read you, if you've already read it, you know what I'm going to read, but this may give you a little taste. This is the final paragraph in the King excerpt that I assigned to you guys. And it kind of sums up what I was trying to say just a minute ago. King writes... At its most basic, we are only discussing a learned skill, meaning writing. But we do not agree that some, but do we not agree that sometimes the most basic skills can create things far beyond our expectations? We are talking about tools and carpentry, about words and style. But as we move along, you do well to remember that we are also talking about magic. So a little bit of that ephemeral woo-woo in there, because I think that's part of what's so exciting is that anyone can make magic with your writing. Once you start thinking about words and sentences like their Legos or any other thing that you might be able to put together to make something else. So that's my analysis and what I hope you take away from the King excerpts. Now let's talk about Baruch. So this is an excellent piece, especially if you're coming more from the medical perspective here. Um, 
because Baruch is a medical doctor who also does quite a lot of creative writing on his own. And so then it can share with us where he sees connections and sort of like a synthesis of the skills in both. Um, and, you know, he comes out swinging with this assertion that all healthcare providers need to think like creative writers. And what does that mean? Does that mean that all medical practitioners need to stop practicing and buy a typewriter? I don't think so. I think that Baruch is making an argument here for clinical empathy that can be heightened and expanded when we are regularly in a practice of composing stories using our imaginations. Not just literal stories like true stories, but using our imaginations is the tool that helps to expand this clinical empathy. And Baruch is really uh, keen to emphasize that this is it. Creative writing shouldn't be just a stepping stone, a lily pad on our way to a diagnosis, but that the creative imaginary is the goal to imagine ourselves into the perspective of the patient is the goal, the end game, not the diagnosis. Almost the diagnosis should become like a byproduct of this process, according to Baruch. But there's some things in here that I think are going to be useful to us as we are working on this creative writing portfolio. And the first one is just the classic heuristic for what makes a good story. I, I say this a lot in the writer's group. I run a writer's group for some folks at my church, and we talk a lot about how story is a character who wants something and can't get it somehow. It could be a glass of water. It could be a deep and abiding purpose in life, but a character plus a desire plus a conflict, now you've got a story. Now there's something to push against and there's somewhere to go. So when you're thinking about your creative writing for this project, just take yourself through that heuristic. If I'm writing a story, even if it's a snapshot, if it's a memoir, even think about when you guys wrote the stories of your names, you could revise those for your portfolio. Think about who's the who are the characters here? What's the conflict? For some of you, the conflict was wanting to know why was I named this or wondering about other meanings to the name. They're you know, that could be a conflict, something that you don't yet have, but you want and you need to figure out how to get it. So thinking about our stories really um, in this craft-based way can help to strengthen them and create more of an arc that readers can follow and a reason that readers want to keep reading. Um, but beyond, I know I've been talking a lot about think about it like a craft, think about writing like Legos, but also don't forget that every good story has an emotional core. And Baruch is really emphasizing that, especially when it comes to patient caregiver relationships and why a caregiver might be invested in a patient's stories, that we need to find that emotional core, that caring. And Baruch, of course, oh, I might sneeze. Oh, gosh. Baruch, of course, connects it to... Phew. Goodness. That was unexpected. <laughs> Baruch, of course, connects creative writing and the caregiver patient relationship to improvisation. And so really the elements of empathy and co-creation that we learned about from uh, Charon last week really come to the fore and are made applicable when we think about these elements in the light of the small vignettes that Baruch includes in this article. 
One of the things that I really like that Baruch emphasizes is the choice making that comes with storytelling. And you guys have already experienced this reading, uh, writing your creative responses from last week. The choices that we make create the arc of the story or flatten it out or create tension or create a bit of humor, but they also lay the groundwork for discovery on our part. So this is the tension, and I would call it a productive tension in the process of creative writing. We have this element of rhetorical choice and craft where we have quite a lot of control as writers over what we are composing. But then also, because we're tapping into our imaginations, we have a little bit, I think we should always have a little bit of our creative writing that's beyond our control. Writers talk about this all the time. Well, I didn't know that my character was going to say that. And people will be like, really? You're the writer. But it's this imaginative productivity that allows for us as writers to discover things about our story as we go that we may not have predetermined or pre-planned. This can create some of the most fun and exciting moments in the creative writing process. And Baruch argues that this is the same skill that caregivers need to have when they're in a patient conversation. When talking with a patient, you need to be, of course, ready to identify the choices and make your own choices about how the conversation is going to go. But you have to be able to allow for surprise for those moments of discovery in which you might, as Einstein once famously said, find your thoughts squirting sideways like a watermelon seed squirting out of a slice. You want to make room for your brain to move in those unexpected ways. And that could lead to, Baruch argues, a more accurate diagnosis in the end. So he calls it the imaginative act of doctoring. And I love this because it really, um, he goes through a couple of examples of how uh, caregivers have put themselves in an empathetic situation because of their imagination and through the act of creative writing that allowed them to make better decisions in a caregiving scenario. So as you read through this and King, and as you watch the Gaiman uh, YouTube clip that I've provided, think about not just the craft of creative writing and how you might engage in it. Maybe you coming to this class, having a really strong and consistent creative writing practice. Maybe you're coming to this class, never really doing much creative writing. Either way, there's a place for you to enter into thinking about writing as, number one, a set of skills, just like any other kind of writing, just like school essays. You can figure out how to write creative pieces in a logical and deductive way. But also there's that creative and productive tension between the logic of creative writing and the systematic way that we approach it in tension with the intuitive nature of creative writing and the ability to tap into our imagination in ways that might surprise even us, the writers. So as you engage in your reading discussions with your small groups this week, get into it. See what you guys can uh, toss back and forth and how many ideas you guys can share with each other. All right. I'm going to stop my share and say, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Continue to email me if you have any questions. I will be in my office Thursday from one to two, if anyone wants to stop by in person, or if you'd like to Zoom with me, just shoot me an email and we can set that up. All right. Happy reading and writing, guys. See you later.